Welcome to Electra Online. Here we are with another exam question from around the world. Now, in this case, it's the JE Advanced Test. And interestingly enough, they're asking a question about errors or percent error. They gave us an equation, and let's read the question. The energy of a system as a function of time t is given as the following equation. E is equal to a squared times e to the minus a t. And then they define a as 0.2 seconds, or 0.2 per second. The measurement of a has an error 1.25%. And if the error of the measurement of time is 1.5%, the percentage error in the value of E at T equals 5 seconds is. So we're trying to find the error of E given the error of A and given the error of T in percent. And the answer is going to be an integer between 1 and 9. So how do we approach that? Well, first we need to understand the rules of dealing with percent errors. And it turns out when multiplying or dividing, you must add percent errors. So you must add percent errors. So let's take another look at that equation right here. First of all, we can write this as e as a function of t is equal to a squared divided by e to the a times t. Now, if time is 5 seconds, and a is 0.2 seconds when we plug those numbers in. So we have e as a function of time equals 5 is equal to a squared divided by e to the 0.2 times 5. And of course, that becomes equal to a squared divided by e to the first power, or simply a squared divided by e. And we can say that this is equal to a times a divided by e to the first power. Now notice that we have a multiplication and a division, which means that the percent error, percent error in E is equal to, well, we have the percent error here, the percent error there, so this is 1.25%, and we have 1.25%, and here we have T, the error in T, error, in t is equal to 1.50 percent. Now the question is, if the error in time is 1.5 percent, what is the error in e in the in all this number? Well, let's see here. What we do know that is going to be 1.25 percent plus 1.25 percent plus question mark. So what's the question mark? Well, do we add the 1.5 percent and say it's equal to four? Well, how do we know for sure? Well, the best thing to do that is as follows. Let's say that we have a 1.5% in the error of time. So instead of 5, we add 1.5%. So e to the 0.2 times, now we're going to add 1.5%. So basically, we're going to go uh, 5 and 1.015. We're going to add 1.5% error to that and see what we end up. So e to that is going to be equal to what? That's going to be 1 times 1.015 equals, take e to the x, that gives us uh, e to the um, 1.015 is equal to 2.75936. And e to the first power is equal to 2.71828. So what is the change in e to that exponent if we make a change in the time by 1.5%? So now we need to take a look and see what is the percent change because of that in the exponential. So what we can then do is we can take the difference, we can take 2.75936 minus 2.71828 and divide it by 2.71828. So that tells us the percent change or the fractional change. So the fractional change is equal to that. So let's see what that's equal to. So we take the difference, we get 2.75936 minus 
828 equals and divide by 2.71828 equals and let's see that that is equal to 0 0.1 oh, 0 0.0151 which is 1.51 percent so notice that if we have a change in time of 1.5% or an error in time of 1.5%, that only gives us an error of 1.51% in the exponential, which is essentially the same, which means we now divide error-wise, we have a 1.25%, a 1.25%, and a 1.51%, which is roughly the same as 1.50%, and so that means we add the 1.50%, and we get a 4% error. Just like we predicted, we just needed to make sure that a change in t, in percent, 1.5% change in t, gave us an equivalent percent change in e to the 0.2 times 5. And we showed you that it does, and therefore, the percent error in e is simply the percent error in a plus the percent error in a, because we have a squared, divided by the percent error of the denominator, which is essentially the same as the percent error in t. Together, adds up to 4% error, and that's the answer they were looking for. That is how it's done. They're not. That is true. So you can't use your calculator. Calculator gone. So, at that point, since you can't use a calculator, you have to assume that when we have e to the first power, a 1.5% change in the exponent, so we have e to the 1, and then we go to e to the 1.015, essentially, you then have to estimate that that's going to be a very small change in e. Another way of looking at it is you kind of think about the exponential function that looks like this. We have 1, this is 1 right here. So you can see that what is the slope change? How fast does the slope change? So we have a, we have a 1 point, or not, yeah, 1.5 percent change in here. Then what will that cause the change to be over there? It's almost linear because there's a very small change in the number one, so therefore there'll be very small change in the function. Estimate it, you kind of look, eyeball it, look at it, and realize that yes, it must be close to 1.5%. So I just verified it number-wise, but you should be able to just claim that yes, if there's a small change in one, there'll be a small change in the exponential function. So is that one of the choices? And there's no choice, we're looking for an integer from one to nine. So, the answer is, um, so, so, yeah, so they're looking for the number four. Yeah, without calculators, you kind of have to eyeball it and realize that you don't think there's a lot of change. You don't have a calculator, you can't really verify it. It's easy to verify with a calculator, but without a calculator, you kind of have to look at it and go, hmm, that's probably about 1.5% change.